Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and today we have updates on the 8 meter band BPSK transceiver that's right here. Look at this, guys! I made the enclosure. This is my first banded aluminum enclosure, and I'm really happy with the results. Where is the cover here? Oh, let's put the cover here. Ooh, look at this, man! Ta -da -da. Unfortunately, I made some mistakes in the design of the architecture in the frequency planning and I don't know anymore if it's gonna work as it is. But I think we can learn a lot from my mistake. I will explain today mistake by mistake so we can see what's the available solutions and how we are going to make this work. If you're not familiar with the project, this is an 8 meter band BPSK transceiver. I started this project in January. Before we talk about my mistakes in the design, let's take an overview of the operation principle. So guys, you have here a BNC connector for the antenna, a class A 25 watts power amplifier for the transmitting side, we have here a small front end for the receiver side, a PLL frequency synthesizer that synthesizes all the frequencies needed, and here's where my biggest mistake was made in this synthesizing and how the frequency planning of all the heterodyne architecture works. We have here in this module a BPSK demodulator that can demodulate a BPSK or 2PSK phase modulated constellation to retrieve the bit stream and here you have a small board that uses an Arduino Nano as the microcontroller and some logic to control the receiver transceiver switch to receive the bit stream from the BPSK demodulator and to send the transmitted bit stream to the class A amplifier. I already made a video about the architecture you can click here to see where I explain how the architecture end to end and how it works. And guys, this is my first design of a radio transceiver from end to end, from the beginning to the end of the architecture. And I made some mistakes that seeing now is so obvious, man. Oh, but I decided to record this video because I'm learning a lot with these mistakes. And I think that I always learn more when I fail than when I succeed with a design. Mistake number one, guys, the frequency planning and the frequencies I choose to use in the heterodyne path of the receiver side. Let's see. This is a simplified overview of the architecture. We have the antenna here receiving the 3.8 MHz signal and this transceiver can transmit and receive in five different frequencies. We change these frequencies using the PLL that can synthesize five different channels. 3.8 Mac 3.825, 3.875, 3 and 3.9. As you can transmit and receive in five different channels or five different frequencies, we need to have a heterodyne path for the receiver side that can translate or shift the received spectrum, the received data stream to a constant frequency. So the BPSK demodulator, that is this board here, can work at a constant frequency. So I designed a BPSK decoder that decodes a stream centered at 10 megahertz. I already have videos about this here in the channel. So we need to translate the spectrum, the receiving spectrum to 10 megahertz so the BPSK demodulator can decode the bit stream. What was my idea, the dumbest idea of the project when I designed this? I made the PLL generate the same frequency we need to receive. And here's the problem we are going to see. But my idea was that if we generate, let's see we are transmitting on channel zero, this channel here. If we are transmitting in 3.8 megahertz, we can generate 3.8 megahertz here. We can mix the 3.8 megahertz with the 10 megahertz crystal to generate a 13.8 megahertz signal that is available here. This 13.8 megahertz signal is mixed with the received signal to translate the signal to a constant 10 megahertz signal because it's the frequency difference between 13.8 and 3.8 megahertz generating a constant 10 megahertz signal that can be decoded with the 10 megahertz BPSK decoder. If we change the channel, so we are using the transceiver at channel 2, let's say, 3.85 megahertz, now we are generating 3.85 we are receiving a 3.85, we are generating 13.85 and the mixing product will also arrive at 10 MHz here at the end of the process. So the BPSK decoders again looks at a 10 MHz signal. But guys, are you seeing the problem here? Are you seeing the problem guys? This looks so nice in the paper. <laughs> I'm shamed. <laughs> we can't generate the same frequency we are trying to receive 
inside the, the transceiver because the front end will pick this signal here that's much stronger than the signal we are trying to read from the antenna we are corrupting the front end with the same frequency inside the transceiver that is trying to receive and amplify it will never work this can't be made we need to work with different frequencies so the 3.8 band is clean for the front end to amplify from the antenna so the front end low noise amplifier is picking this signal here amplifying it to a very strong signal and it doesn't matter the signal at the antenna because the signal leakage inside the transmitter here is very high i'm in a situation now that i think it's never going to work in this manner and i need to change the topology the biggest problem here is that all this architecture is made it in the boards using the electronics components it's not so easy to change the the frequencies because we need to change the filters we need to change the signal paths we will have changes in phase in gain it's not so easy and now we need to find a solution for this correcting the transmitter path is easier because we can generate double the frequency so we can generate let's let's say for channel zero we can generate here 7.6 meg and we can divide it by two here we can divide it by two before we mix with the bit string to be transmitted by the pa so the transmitter side is easy you can generate the double the frequency with the pll and divide it by two before transmission but for the receiver side it's not so easy because if we generate 7.6 meg now we are going to land at 17.6 here and the signal now will not always land at 10 megahertz because think with me if we are generating 7.6 with the pll and we are trying to receive a 3.8 megahertz signal channel zero of the transceiver and we can see that we can make it work changing the decoding frequency of the bpsk receiver using i think 13.8 here yeah because we have 17.6 and it will generate a down conversion signal at 13.8 okay for channel zero it can work but when we go to channel one 3.825 we are now trying to receive a 3.825 but now the pll needs to generate 7.65 we have a 25 increment in the channel but we have a 50 kilohertz increment in the pll frequency because we need to to divide by two to transmit so 7.65 divided by two will be 3.825 okay the transmitter side works but now the receiver side don't work anymore because we are mixing now 7.65 with 10 megahertz we we are generating 17.65 and now the difference is not 13.8 is 13.825 because we have a 25 increment there in the received signal and a fifth increment here in the receiver heterodyne path so we are landing the signal at another frequency here and this difference will be larger as the frequency channel is increased it's not so easy to solve this problem mistake number two guys the class a driver this driver uses two npn transistors and you have a bottom switch here that is discharging the gate capacity through the gate resistors this diode and the switch channel here and this switch also translates the signal to the upper switch that charges the gate capacitance so when this switch is off this resistor will bias the transistor and the transistor will conduct to charge the fat capacitance the problem with this architecture is that we are lost in a lot of power in this transistor here because it's dissipating all the biasing current of this resistor here the dc current here is very large and we are in the limit the frequency range this architecture here can reach we are running at 3.8 megahertz and it's really important that the class a amplifier here to be well tuned because if it's not well tuned we have reflection of the signal here that's coupled to the input by the miller effect i also have a video about miller effect you can click right here in the balloon and the signal reflected by the miller effect will disrupt the functioning of this driver here so a better driver topology may be a class c amplifier would be better here for higher frequency mistake number three the front end has more gain than is needed front end uses a cascade of two amplifiers and for the eight meter band this has more gain than needed this amplifier in 3.8 megahertz has more than 8 db of gain man here you can see the front end amplifier we have the signal from the antenna 
it passes through this transmitter receiver switch and isolation network here that also works as a low pass filter for the received signal and it arrives here at the base of this BF199 transistor that is a tuned class A amplifier so we have here class A action with a tuned circuit and for the 8 meter band guys the signals received in the antenna are pretty large so this second stage here I think is actually not needed okay because you're increasing a lot the gain we are increasing the noise floor we are decreasing the noise figure of all this stage here because of the cascaded action here so maybe i will disable this stage here or i use some kind of feedback from the collector to the uh, base to reduce its gain i try to shield the front end and this air inductors here to see if the leakage situation would improve but no guys i think that the frequency planning needs a redesign and it doesn't matter the amount of shielding we put here in the front end try to isolate this board here i think it's it's a bad design and we need to change it so guys thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoy it i hope you are going to get it working we are going to solve the problems and if you like the channel if you like the video please subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up and i see you in the next video